it's all yours. Yeah. So before I start my presentation about Fabi, I just want to introduce myself and I have a little announcement to make. So first about myself, I'm a freelancer. I have a website, it's called Apex at Work. It's quite known um, supporting uh, or it's giving you some examples how to solve certain Apex issues. And yeah, so I'm working, my focus is on Apex and business intelligence. And today I want to make a little announcement. Maybe some of you, because now we are on the Apex track, some of you know already about it. It's, uh, it's the Apex coin. And there's a guy in our community, his name is Adrian PNG. And he had the idea to create those little coins with unique numbers. And once a year, or at least the last two years, you could call him or you could uh, get in contact with him and you could buy like five of these coins. And those coins are made to give to other developers. Other developers in our community, maybe half friends of yours, uh, which supported you to as an appreciation for their support towards yourself. And today I um, have still, I mean, this year I bought five coins. Um, one I gave to Adrian himself, because I think he deserves it just out of this idea. And another one went to Vincent Monod, his main developer of the Fabi project. And the other three I'm talking about are going to three German friends, um, which are good friends to me. They are working for our community, getting new students into our community. And they are great Apex developers. So my three coins go to Rebecca Kieserwetter, Markus Holoch, and Matthias Noll. Okay, but now let's go on with the real topic, Fabi. In 2019, I think it was even late 2018, Vincent Monod and Stephen Feuerstein, they created an application or they wanted to create an application to fight climate change by creating an application for us people to change our behavior by doing individual action against the climate change. And the Fabi app is basically is part of two apps. So there's the real app, which you can download and use on your smartphone. And then we have the content app, which is a basic Apex application supporting the administration task in it. And the real app, I will go uh, into it in, with a few more details. So first of all, the Fabi app is a PWA, which means it's just a web app, but it is optimized for the mobile usage. So it's the design, it's, it's a custom design, it's, it's completely built within Apex, but it uses a custom design and this custom design is responsive for every kind of resolution. And, but it looks not like an Apex application. It is really optimized, the whole application is optimized for the mobile web app usage, which is far off what um, a typical mobile app in the universe team would offer you. And yeah, well, one, one thing which may I should um, tell you, this is the picture of the first version. We are currently working on a second version. And the first version, you can download it right now already, but it, is, it has a certain focus and a certain focus is our reaction. So you can, first of all, get an idea of of what you can actually do to change your own behavior in little steps and small steps, how you can prevent certain things, how you can be more well against your environment, what, what you can do. You can get um, some examples and you can follow them by creating action plans, 
searching those actions and get um, uh, reminders about it. But the next version, and I will come later on about this topic, it has some major ex uh, enhancements in it, which makes the app itself much more usable for everyone. But this version, it can already be downloaded on fape.earth and it can be downloaded on Android devices as an app itself. And if you're using iOS, you have to install it via the, the website. It's not complicated at all, but iOS, or well, let's say Apple, does not support PVAs yet as much as Android or Google does. FAPE itself um, is a organization with, uh, well, it's a non-profit organization and we have supporters from all over the world. Um, and we have different kind of task which everyone is following. So we have certain developers, we have UI experts, we have marketing experts, we have even a video edit expert, all kind of experts supporting that project. And you couldn't do it alone. You would never reach that high level of quality alone. I mean, just with developers only. So we have them all over the place. And let's take a look at the backend technology. Now we're getting closer to the technical point of view. My presentation will go to the backside of this uh, application. Um, it tells you a little bit and about the problems we faced. And to understand about the problems, you need to know how we act. So first of all, because we are nonprofit, we got we are we can use the Google G Suite for free doing all our communications, meetings, and all kind of documentation, sharing, and so on. The backend technology for our Apex application is an Oracle database, of course, which is uh, deployed in the Oracle Cloud. And Oracle gave us, well, gave it us for free because of our, well, intentions they gave us free credits so that we can use their full power of technology, the full stack. And for us developers, the DevOps part is quite important because we are working with GitLab for the source control as well as the task management. And for automatic testing, we have also uh, one guy who is responsible for that and we choose or well, we choose Cypress as a client-side validation tool, which is using JavaScript for the client-side validation tests. And we are using util PSQL for the database code validations or testing. As well, we are also using Apex Nitro and Blocker for JavaScript development and for our error messages. Okay, so some general challenges we or well, at least from my perspective, what I faced in this new kind of circumstances, because until then I never worked in a international project with completely strange people from all over the place. So one of the biggest problems when you're doing something like this is your work-life balance. You cannot just say, I want to do it. You need to invest time. And you have to invest time into new technologies because you will learn something new. And you will have to work with other volunteers, other specialists, but they have different time zones. And to get things swept up, you have to define roles and you have to define standards, how you will work together. And you have, because we're building an app, you have to look at security a lot because this app must be secure, which is maybe, I mean, out of the standard Apex um, application, most applications are quite secure, but we can't really use every technology aspect of Apex. We have to build that in a different way um, for a usability point of view, but it still must be secure. So there's a high sensibility on that. And then there's the unknown problems which occur, which you have to deal with, 
which are normally not, it's not the kind of stuff which normally occurs in your daily work life. Can you, can you hear me? Because my headset went off. Uh, yes. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. So about new technical challenges, there we we really had to face some some issues we never had. To, you normally don't have to deal with, and that's from a technical point of view. It's this mobile UI. I what I already talked about. It's the whole PWA thing we have to cooperate with. The image processing, we working with a lot of images and they must display really fast. And Apex is not really made for image processing. So we had to find solutions for that. And also for an auto lock in mechanism. mechanism. Um, Apex is um, le letting you locked out after a certain while. So we had to find a solution for that issue to stay always online as you are used to it on Twitter, Facebook, or any other mobile application. Yeah. And well, besides these new technical challenges, I want to get, I want to compare certain scenarios now, which you discover it in your daily work compared to Fabi. So a typical Apex project is based from one person, two persons working together on the project. With Fabi, it's completely different. We have around 10 developers doing all different kinds of tasks um, and Vincent is trying to manage them. And yeah, you're working completely online. Um, some of the members met last year at the K-Scope conference, but we never all met at one place until now. And a typical meeting, well, there is no typical meeting anymore. So let's skip that one because we all have to go the Fabi way. We have to meet online, but Fabi is still a bit uh, different. When we meet online, we are in different time zones. For example, there is a a developer, uh, it's Erika, she lives in New Zealand. And when we meet at 9 p.m., she's 12 hours ahead. So for her, it's 9 uh, a.m. in the morning. So it's always a bit fun, uh, that's uh, those different circumstances and we, but we still can do work good together. Um, but some of us are at nights, I mean, when we, meet at 9 a.m., uh, 9 p.m. in the European time, then the Indian supporters, for example, they are asleep. So not everyone can meet always. Now I will come back to work-life balance. Um, I want to give you a visual example about it. I mean, first of all, I, I think a lot of you have this feeling that you need to do something and we are technology experts and we have the knowledge to do something. Um, at least I had this feeling, but that's only one side of the medal. We have to not just say we want to do something, we also need to have the time besides our hobbies, our work, our well, health, family, friends. And then there comes a project like Fabi, which will take a amount of time um, and the people doing the Fabi project, they expect you to, to do something. You cannot just say, I want to do something and then you never have the time to do to actually do it. That's not how it works. But still, um, it's another pressure on you. And this is how it goes. I mean, it's maybe not Fabi, but you have, for example, UTP SQL, guys supporting that project, they're facing the same issue. So as soon as you are, doing something for the community, you have to find a way to integrate it in your work-life balance. Otherwise, uh, it's like uh, Mr. Miyagi just said, better learn balance, balance is the key. Otherwise, you lose the control and the mountain you're standing on becomes too big. 
the task getting too much and you don't see it anymore, you cannot focus anymore. Another example, when you're doing a normal Apex project in your, well, work life, uh, in your normal, uh, for your normal job, you getting recognition from, from the end users. They are really happy what you did because they see the, they see the results, you build what they needed, and you're always motivated by that because people are happy what you build. And you even get money for that. So it's, well, probably better than any other application technology because the benefits, the motivation is really high doing Apex projects. But in Fabi, it's, it's different. You get, you don't have this crowd which are firing you up that you made something really good. So you have to focus on your special abilities. So what are your abilities? How can you support this project? Um, are you a backend guy, marketing guy, UI, UX? Are you for testing? Are you good at finding bugs because you think this is what you want to do? That's something you have to consider. And I'm always a bit of the data guy. Um, I think I can support, my best support will be uh, in data analysis and supporting processes about data. And if you can't really fit into it, it will become hard if you just do something else, what you're not really, what you don't really like. It's about motivation to support a project. So you have to find your spot. And of course, the general motivation about FAPE is this, it's the years, it's the world we are living in. We want to save and it's about our children. They should have the same future as we have it. Now let's get back to something more technical here. When we began FAPE, we started from a typical database way of doing things. So we started with a data model and then we had this Apex uh, development cycle. And because everyone is saying you need a good data model, otherwise your application will fall apart really soon. We started with the data model. We defined responsibilities, we defined data model standards. We created the first prototypes, did some round trips, discussed it. And um, after we got our first draft, we also then included multi-language, EBR, and some settings for GDPR. And besides that task, there was the Apex development going on as a prototyping. So they did their own data model, so to say, and went just ahead. And we had more or less than two data models uh, beside each other. And I want to show you what it actually means, data model, and how complicated it, it, it is creating a data model for an app like Fabi, which should attract everyone in the world, should always be online, even during upgrades, what it actually means. And for that, uh, I want to show you this uh, actions example. So we have different action categories and every action categories includes actions. And by that we collected over 300 actions so far. And this is quite easy. So we start in our example data model here, we start with the action category and the action itself. So first early version, we define some basic rules for foreign keys, date columns, system columns, constraints, prefixes, and then we enhanced it. We changed some settings because we choose it differently. We changed some naming rules and we integrated multi-language. So technically we changed this from the data model point of view in our development cycle, but then we also integrated multi-language um, including a new language table and this language table had a connection towards every detail table in our data model. And it's our multi-language work like this. Every column which could be translated, for example, in the action table or the category table, 
got an own specific translation table with those columns included. And it got um, the language ID as foreign key. So for example, I want to wash my hands. Uh, I don't know, no, no, maybe not wash your hands, but maybe you should uh, use tape water instead of plastic bottles. And this text about tape water and the description to it and the story to it, this could be This could be um, translated into different languages. And yeah, so this is just multi-language. And now we integrated EBR. And EBR, for that, we got a new guy. His name is Watcher from, from UK. He had some, well, information about it, some experience with it. And he helped us with the EBR data model. And with EBR, it's mostly about that we can update the data model during the system is up and running. So with zero downtime. But for that to integrate, EBR is really complicated. So on top of our already complicated data model, because the multi-language had to be integrated everywhere in our data model, the EBR was creating versions of tables. And on top of those versions, we had views, which are now our real. They, those views here, they should respond as our, from a developer point of view, our baseline uh, tables. And then we have our real views. So it become, became really complicated. I mean, we started with two tables and now it became really complicated. And at the same time, Oh, sorry. At, at the same time, we had our Apex development going on, our application development. And we decided not to take the gigantous data model. We choose to update the current data model with some definitions we decided to make, um, but basically stay small to be able, when the application becomes bigger, which includes, which needs multi-language, um, which needs EBR, then we would change it. But until then, we take the speed uh, more, uh, we, we like the speed more than the feature set, which is, uh, which those techniques will give us. Because when you need to update anything now on this data model, it becomes really complicated. In our current data model, it's quite easy still. Okay, now an up requirement we had was the ability to always stay online. And in Apex, you have two session, uh, two variables, application settings, which is one is called maximum session length and the other one is called maximum session idle time. They define how long you can stay in your application until you get locked out. And we needed to stay always online. And for that, we used a technique. It's called client-side SSO, which is using JSON web token. And this technique is, uh, we used it and I will show you what we did and what we had to face to deal with first before we came that far. So first of all, we designed the first setting the maximum session length to zero. And zero meant it's the session exists indefinitely. It exists forever. At least that's what the documentation said. The, se the second session was, we set up the session idle time with 3,600 seconds. And within that time, we tried to refresh the, the um, browser to be able to stay always online. But we always got the following issued. So this is an old screen of the app. So it's changed by now, but um, I just want to show you the issue. So we always got this unexpected JSON token error. And we could not really get our hands on it, why it happened. Why did always the session got lost? And for 
that I at the end I called Kosten Chorsky for his help because I was I, could, I didn't know what to do anymore and he said that he looked into the code there is a job which kills every idle or every session basically when it was uh, idle for 12 hours so an internal job kills every in, uh, idle job and this is because the session table should not become too big. So there's an internal mechanism in Apex, which sets off this maximum session length to 12 hours, even though you are, I mean, so, so this was always hitting every, um, everyone who was using the app. And we didn't know about this 12 hours time set. Um, what we did was we could not change it, um, it was standard Apex and we did not want to change the Apex code itself. What we did instead was we wanted to be online on every kind of device all the time. And to, to do it, we integrated this client side single sign on and it worked this way. You open Fabi, you log in and dynamic action is running after you logged in, it saves your client ID and that's the most important, it creates a JSON web token. And this JSON web token is saved on your client side. And when your session expires, the Apex application um, gets it and checks for the JSON web token again when, when the session got expired and relogs in you automatically. Uh, because it takes the client information, checks it with the server information, and relogs in you and creates a new token for you. I mean, this sounds simple. It's quite complicated, and it took us a long time to fix it. And this is, um, well, this takes another presentation to describe how it in works in detail. And then we had, I mean, today is the 4th of May. So um, we integrated UTP SQL, as I told you before, but I never used UTP SQL before. So I have, uh, I, I met Samuel Nietzsche. He, you maybe know him. He's the guy with the Syslord uh, cape, and he is doing his presentations always with about UTP SQL with some Star Wars theme and also with examples all around Star Wars. And I asked him to give me some support, get to know UTP SQL better, how it works, because it works different to a normal P, uh, to a normal package. There's a different kind of logic behind it. And I could not really get my hands on it in a way that it was easy for me to understand. So he gave me some ideas about it. And after I understood what, what it is about, uh, I organized a meeting for our Fabi team, uh, with our Fabi team and Samuel, and we discussed the naming guidelines and the coding practices. And it was the most important thing was the naming. I mean, it's not just a prefix test before each package, it's the naming of the procedures. And I did some, I, I rewrote my whole code in the application. Uh, the, I, I mean, you see a lot of test packages here. I got the task to rewrite, to, to create a test package for one package, and that was the authentication package. Because I was obviously working on this auto login mechanism, and I was aware of this, of the functionality regarding the authentication package. And I rewrote the code, which I started to do. I gave it to one of our testing guys. His name is Hayden. And he was re-watching my code. And I did the following. Um, I want to give you a simple example. So after the feedback from Samuel and the discussing with the team, we have here like two procedures. First of all, our procedure names, we decided to have them naming the activity we want to do. 
it's not named after a procedure itself, it's named after what we want to achieve. And then we, or I held it as simple as possible. So this is um, a, a UTP sequel call. I expect the result from this procedure to be true. That's what the test is doing. So if it's not true, the, the test will fail. And I have the same kind of procedure verify an authentication failure. So I want to explicitly test the same procedure, but I want to be yes, are you there? Yeah, now I'm now I'm back. My my headset is always turning itself off. Don't know why. Sorry. Um, I wanted to check an authentication failure. The same, I mean, same procedure, just a different purpose. So I named it after that purpose and I did a second test. And they are quite, I mean, it's like a, just a few lines of row and it makes it really easy to read actually. Um, not with a lot of variables, declarations, just, just testing as easy as possible. That was, the recommendation from Samuel and I was following it and I found it really effective. Um, so I got a code verification from Hayden first. He liked it. Then Samuel, I, I then decided to write a blog post about it to get an, well, a real world example out there so that everyone could is able to use it. And an authentication package is something really easy, normal, well, how can I say it? Something everyone can get an idea what's uh, what it is about. Uh, authentication, everyone has to deal with authentication. So I took an example up, um, which everyone could really work with. And also for myself to have the next time I have to need the need of UTP SQL that I have examples how to do it easy and in a wide way. So, and Samuel, he was checking that one again. He found some issues. So I had to update my authentication package again, updated the blog post, but finally um, was able to publish it. So this is it for UTP SQL. Um, at the beginning at the development during the auto login mechanism, I made a huge mistake, which you, do not really um, experience in a normal Apex project when you're only one or two persons. I had the requirement to create this auto login prototype. For that, I created an own Apex application as a prototype to show how it works. After that, I may created all the logic into Fabi, um, upgraded the packages, or everything was up and running somebody had to make a little update on the authentication package and because it was still in test stadium i was not i haven't saved it and i didn't use files to save it either so all my code was lost because i was not using gitlab real well we did not have flashback table activated yet and basically i felt like a little child because i didn't follow this, the basic rules of coding but it's something you really learn when you do something new, that you are, nobody's perfect. So we all learn something new when we do something out of our general scope. And now I want to tell, now I want to talk about what's, what's to come because I already mentioned, we are currently working on version two. Version one, we had a high focus on the actions itself. And now we integrated a calendar function for your actions to be displayed on the right day. Because we have actions who apply only on, on uh, who apply every day, every week, every month, and you can define how you want it to be. And this calendar function gives you on a certain day, the action you need to do. And then, and that's even more important, we integrated social interaction. In the moment when you do an action, you can post about it. So that is, if we, uh, the, the, so that other users like Twitter uh, get an information about your activities and others get motivated to uh, do it too. 
the next big thing we integrated is collaboration, which we call missions. So we try to create missions for everyone to join. For example, skip meet for one day. So everyone in the FAPE project, or no, not everyone in the FAPE project, everyone in the FAPE app using the application is getting this mission and should try to avoid meet for one day. And when we have millions of users, this has a huge impact. And it also starts, I mean, you, you get a better motivation to actually do it. So those are really um, the things we try to change, the social interaction, the collaboration, the way we are using those actions. And we also implemented some technology, some, some business intelligence technology to suggest you actions based on questions you fulfilled um, to give you an idea what actions you may need, which would fit you best, which you should have a look on it to try it out. And we also reworked the whole UI design. Our UI designers, they said the old UI design was not good enough at all. So we, or, at least, or let's say, not, not me, but other developers like Vincent and other, one, other developers, they created a whole new app design to make it more, well, usable for everyone. And this is yet to come. Um, we are currently testing the current version and yeah, this is the current state of the application. Um, if you want to check out Fabi right now, it's, it less, it's definitely worth a look, especially when we talk about those actions to get an idea what you can do to change yourself. But you should give it another chance when version two got released and then that's the moment when you get really attracted by it. At least I got attracted by it when I saw all those new, new features really working. And I'm really looking forward to that new version to try it out and try to integrate it into my daily life. And a little conclusion. Um, first of all, it made me think a lot about my own impact. I mean, the whole project the last one and a half years, they made me think about my own impact on the planet, what I can do different. I also found out that I'm quite good at communication, but English is not my native language and 90% understanding is not enough to discuss complicated things. So I had to learn about that and have to, well, extend my abilities and still working on it. It's also fun to work with people all over the world. You see, you can feel the different cultures. You have these task dependencies. It, it makes fun. It's really a cool thing to experience. And you had to face complex tasks, new tasks, new ways in you had to learn new stuff, um, what you normally don't need to do. And that's something, uh, it's, it's hard on one side, but it's also, well, as a developer, it's fun to experience something new. And well, at the end, I want to just remind you from tomorrow on, the Apex Connect is, taking place for two days, Apex topics. We have three tracks. One track is for English speakers or for in, is in English language. And the other two tracks are in German. So in case you are looking out for Apex topics in the next two days, you should look at apex.org. And well, that's it from my side. I don't know if you have questions. Uh, I, 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 I'm ready or I'm finished so far. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tobias. I don't see question at the moment. Maybe they are still writing them. There were some raised hands during the talk. Uh, I'm not sure whether 
uh, they just didn't write out their questions or whether the questions were answered implicitly in the talk afterwards. So if anybody raised their hand during the talk and maybe still has something open, uh, now's the time. <laughs> 